Hey everybody, this is Matt with MattsMath.com. Thanks for joining us here today as we check out scatter plots and trend lines. What are they? Let's figure that out. We're in the Common Core Standard of Functions, and we are going to be talking about defining, evaluating, and comparing functions today, especially having to do with estimating a function. All right, our guiding question we're going to ask ourselves is how can we use graphs to predict a trend? How can we look in the future based on how things have turned out in the past? Pretty cool part of math here is that we're able to predict and look at and see what happens in the future. All right, if you think about your baseball and your practice that you might have, you think about sometimes baseball takes a lot of your time, doesn't it? It's a pretty great sport. Sometimes... It does take a little bit more time, though, than what you might be able to allow for school. If you think about it, the amount of time that you study, you'd expect your grades to go up, right? Well, here's some evidence of it. We did a survey here, and you took students and asked them how, many times you, how much time did you study versus how good your grades were, percentage-wise. So the more time, obviously, that you study, the higher your grades. That makes sense, right? Well, this is an actual trend. We can actually predict what's going to happen. We can say, hey, well, if you study for seven hours a week, where would your grades be? If you studied for less than an hour, your grades would be down here. We can predict that by making a scatter plot, by putting a whole bunch of our data on a graph and looking at the dots. Okay? So that's what we're doing. We're comparing data that might not necessarily have apparent correlations. They might not seem to have a relationship whatsoever, but we can make some conclusions when we put them on a graph. So here's our scatter plot. That's the definition. A scatter plot is a graph that shows the relationship between two different sets of data, and that's it. Okay? It compares two different things, like studying, the amount of time studying, versus how good your grades are. Uh, we can make a scatter plot versus how much time you practice compared to how many shots you make. All right? So a scatter plot really is just comparing two different sets of data. And there's three different ways that we can describe it. And this is called a positive correlation or a positive relationship. Okay? It's a positive relationship or positive correlation. If you notice, take a line, we're going to kind of make an estimated line here. If we go from there to there, that line kind of gives us, what, a positive slope, doesn't it? Positive slope, so therefore it's a positive correlation. Okay, positive relationship, positive correlation. As X increases, so does Y. For example, the more you study, the more problems you get correct on the test, right? The more time you take to study, the more problems you get correct. Versus this one, this is a negative correlation or correlation or a relationship. All right, it's a negative one. As x increases, y decreases. For example, the less time you study, the more problems you'll miss on the test. So if you hardly study at all, you'll most likely miss a lot of the questions on the test. Okay, and going back to it, notice that it is, if we were to draw a line, it has a negative slope through there, something like that. The line there has a negative slope. Okay? That's what we're going to be talking about today, is looking at different graphs. And then this one just has no relationship or no correlation whatsoever. Okay? It's just a bunch of random dots on the screen. Okay? There's no pattern between the X and Y. It's like saying, hey, the more pizza you eat, the better you're going to score on the test. Right? I mean, you think about it. Yeah, that's silly. And yeah, there might be some correlation to it, but no way. Most likely, the more pizza you eat has nothing to do with how well you score on the test. I mean, obviously, if you ate tons and tons and tons of pizza, you would do very poorly on the test. All right, so what we talked about in looking at the slopes before is called the line of best fit, and it's drawn to estimate the pattern of the data. And the closest to all the data, so kind of the average of the graph or the general pattern. So looking at this, notice it's 
kind of as if you take that last dot and the first dot and you connect the dots and everything goes in between. So most of the dots, you got half the dots on top, half the dots on bottom, half the dots on top and on bottom and so forth. So this is the idea of what's called a line of best fit. So from here, we can now estimate pretty accurately what happens in the future or where, you know, if I said, hey, you studied for four hours, what would your grade be? The line of best fit, okay? Well, let's graph a scatter plot now. Given a set of data, we can graph numbers and see what kind of correlation we get. We're going to plot these points on the X and Y graph. And I want you to then see if you can find any correlation. Here's our hours of inter on the internet per day. And these are your grade averages in school. Okay, so what you would do is you'd take your first point would be on 190. Your second point would be at 287. First point or next point would be 195, and you're putting a dot on each of these particular points, okay? A dot on each of those points. All right, and you're going to get something like this. All right, these are the hours on the internet per day and your grade percentage, okay? Notice that the more hours you spend on the internet per day, the lower your grade point average. You're just spending too much time on the internet, really, is what it boils down to, is you're not spending enough time studying. Your priorities aren't right. If this is what you're doing during school or after school, spending that much time on the internet. All right? What is the correlation? Is it positive or negative? Is there a trend? Can you imagine what's going to happen if we said someone actually, if we guessed how many, and what their grade would be if they had six hours on the internet per day? You could guess that, huh? Well, which of these examples would most likely be a positive correlation? Snow on Thursdays, candles height versus the time it was burned, the price of a pizza and its number of toppings, and the temperature of a rock sitting outside in a snowy day. Which of these most likely has a positive correlation? Which of these has a negative correlation? The amount of time practicing a free throw and the shots you make, the amount of time running and the time it takes you to run a mile, and salt and salt containers at a store, Weight of a dog versus the amount of food it eats. Which one of these is a negative correlation? Positive, negative, or neutral. The number of classes you take and the number of shoes you have. Positive, negative, neutral. Right? Now, do this one. What kind of correlation is this displayed in this graph? All right, ready for your hints? Give a real-life example of this graph, if you would, before you see the hints. Think of an example of what you would see as something increases, y decreases. What might you see there? All right. Here are your answers. Definitely on number five, studying more produces a test with less problems missed. And that's the idea. Can you use graphs to predict a trend now? You can, huh? You're able to see those different types of correlations and the relationships they have with the data between each other. And you're able to really read a scatter plot now. Well, that's it. As we talked about scatter plots and trend lines today, this was Matt with MathsMath.com. Check us out on Facebook at Solving Maths Problems or on Twitter at MathsMath. And enjoy math and baseball.